Here's a C-sharp web scraper that extracts product titles and prices from a bookstore. Such a scraper could be used as a template for almost any kind of scraping target. The script is adaptable to all languages, supported by the .NET platform including VB.NET, f -sharp, and others. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'll show you how to set up your own web scraper using the C-sharp programming language. Hello everyone, I'm Daniel and in this video you'll find out how to employ c -sharp to download HTML pages, how to parse them and how to extract the required data in a readable format. Let's get started. Conveniently, c -sharp has a wide selection of web scraping libraries, three of which will be used in this tutorial, namely HTML Agility Pack, Scrapey Sharp and Puppeteer Sharp. CSV Helper, a .NET library, will be used for reading and writing CSV files. Let's take a closer look at each tool individually. HTML Agility Pack is an HTML parser that downloads web pages directly or using a browser. This package tolerates malformed HTML and supports XPath, including the ability to parse local HTML files. Scrapey Sharp supports CSS selectors and simulates a web browser. This framework is a wrapper for HTML Agility Pack. Puppeteer Sharp is a .NET port of the famous Puppeteer project for Node.js. It uses the Chromium browser to load pages. This package employs the async await style of code, enabling asynchronous promise-based behavior. CSV Helper and Advanced CSV Generator supports read the reading and writing of custom class objects and handles any sort of string. Equipped with the right tools, it is time to write the web scraping script targeting a dummy bookstore that contains two points of interest, book titles and prices. For today's code, the .NET 5 SDK with Visual Studio Code will be employed. The following script has been tested with the .NET Core 3 and .NET 5 and should work with other versions of .NET as well. For the C-sharp development environment, install Visual Studio Code and .NET 5.0 or newer. You can use .NET Core 3.1 as well. After the installation is complete, open the terminal and run a command to verify that .NET command line interface is working properly. The output should be a version of the installed .NET. Note that the code will be part of the .NET project. To keep it simple, create a console application, then create a folder where you want to write the c -sharp code. Next, open the terminal and navigate to the newly created folder. Type in a command which will return the confirmation that the console application has been created. Now, let's install the required packages. HTML Agility Pack to scrape public web pages and CSV Helper to extract scraped data to a CSV file. Keep in mind that if you have Visual Studio instead of Visual Studio Code, you can use NuGet Package Manager to handle the installation. One more thing to consider to ensure a smooth web scraping process, regardless of your tools, is proxies. Proxies allow you to avoid being detected and as a consequence, being flagged, blacklisted or banned from a target website. While using proxies, you can resemble organic traffic with each HTTP request. This way, you won't reach a threshold of server tolerance. Find out how to choose the most suitable proxies for a task at hand by clicking on a pop-up in the top right corner or by following the link in the video description. Now that the packages have been installed, let's move on to the writing the code for scraping the bookstore. The first step is to download the HTML of a web page. The HTML is a string that you have to convert into an object for further processing, or simply put, for parsing. HTML Agility Pack can read and parse data from local files, HTML strings, URLs, and browsers. In this case, you only need to get an HTML from a URL. Instead of using a .NET native function, HTML Agility Pack provides convenient class, HTML Web. This class offers the load function that can take a URL and return an instance of the HTML document class, which is also part of the package in use. With this information, you can write a function that takes a URL and returns an instance of the HTML document class. To complete the first part of the code, open the program.cs file and enter the function in the program class. The second part is parsing the document. In this part of the code, the required information is extracted from the downloaded web page. 
At this stage, the document is now an object of the HTML document class. This class exposes two functions for selecting the elements. Both functions accept XPath as input and return HTML node or HTML node collection. For today's example, book data from the mystery section will be scraped. First, the data needs to be parsed to enable the extraction of all the links to the books. To do so, open this page in the browser, right-click on any of the book links and press Inspect. This will open the developer tools. The selected XPath should be something similar to this. This XPath can now be passed on to the Select Nodes function. Note that this function is being called by the document node attribute of the HTML document. Also, declare the book links list for storing the links that will be extracted from the page. The variable link nodes is a collection. You can write the for each loop over it and get the href from each link one by one. However, there is a small problem to take care of. The links on the page are relative, hence they need to be converted into an absolute URL before scraping the extracted links. For converting the negative URLs, make use of the URI class, using this constructor to get the URI object with an absolute URL. Once you have the URI object, check the absolute URI property to get the complete URL. Writing all this in a function will keep the code organized. In this function, the starting point is an empty list string object. In the for each loop, add all the links to this object and return it. Now it's time to modify the main function to test the C-sharp code that has been written so far. To run the code, open the terminal and navigate to the directory, which contains this file. Type in the .NET run to retrieve the number of links. After retrieving the book links, the next step is to process them to get book details. At this point, you have a list of strings that contain the URLs of the books. First, write a loop that will get the document using the getDocument function that you've already written. After that, use the select single node function to extract the title and price of the book. To keep the data organized, start with a class. This class will represent a book with two properties, title and price. Now open a book page in the browser and create an XPAC for the title, H1. Create an XPAC for the price is a bit trickier as the additional books at the bottom of the page share the same class. Note that the XPath contains double quotes. You can escape these characters by prefixing them with a backslash. Then, you can use the select single node function to get the node, and then employ the inner text property to get the text contained in the element. This function will return a list of book objects. Update the main function with this new code addition as well. The final part of this web scraping project is to export the data to a CSV file. The export function is a pretty straightforward process. First, create a stream writer and send the CSV file name as a parameter. Next, use this object to create a CSV writer, then use the writer records function to write all the books in a single line of code. To ensure that all the resources are closed properly, use the using block. You can also wrap everything in a function. Finally, call this function from the main function. And that's it. To run this code, open the terminal and enter the command .NET run. Within seconds, you'll have a book CSV file containing titles and prices. Congratulations, you've successfully set up a C-sharp web scripting script. Naturally, this code can be enhanced further. For instance, you can add the showcase logic to handle multiple pages, or the script can be automated as a recurring job. The options are as vast as your web scraping needs. I hope this video gave you an idea of how to set up your very own C-sharp web scraper. After all, the big magic is to find, apply, and combine the right tools. All the links to the tools mentioned in this tutorial are in the video description below. If you're interested in more hands-on tutorials, take a look at Web Scraping with Python, the most popular web scraping language. And if you have any questions about building a web scraper with C-sharp or any other programming language, feel free to contact us at hello at oxlabs.io or simply leave a comment below. To see more content like this, press that subscribe button as well as like and share this video on your social media. Thank you for tuning in. This was Oxlabs and I hope to see you again next time.